Um, first of all, I have to say that I'm very excited to be here. Very thankful to Sergio, to Paolo, to Beniamino for this uh, opportunity. And I uh, have to say that today I have to achieve uh, uh, two big uh, challenges for me. The first one is that I have to keep this uh, conversation only in English. And as I said yesterday to the other speakers, and as you will uh, understand very soon, uh, English is definitely not my mother language, so please, uh, <laughs> I will, uh, I promised you that I will uh, do a lot of errors, grammatical errors, okay? And the second one is, the, the second uh, challenge is, the second challenge is that I have to uh, tell you about uh, what an algorithm, algorithm is, okay? And I think that perhaps you know better than me what an algorithm is. I am just a programmer. And, uh, and so uh, my idea is that um, uh, I can tell you, I can uh, tell you how algorithms changed my life, and I guess uh, changed your, because just understanding from where we come, we can figure out where we are going. And so let's start with a curiosity uh, that uh, Paolo Barnard uh, before, because uh, or, uh, Paolo already told you, that uh, um, the name of an uh, algorithm, algorithmi in Italian, or algoritmo, uh, uh, the, the name came from uh, uh, this man named Hal Hawarizmi, uh, a Persian guy, a mathematician, an, ast an astronomer, and, a, and, and geographer, and was uh, principally responsible for spreading the Italian, the, sorry, the Indian system of uh, enumeration and uh, because uh, he wrote a book named On the Calculation with the Hindu Numerals, uh, translated in Latin with Algorithmi de Numero Indorum. And, uh, and that's it. Uh, from that day, um, we, 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 we took the, the name of algorithm. But uh, let me continue with, uh, with a definition, a definition that you can find on the Wikipedia, a very simple definition that says that in mathematics and computer science, an algorithm is a self-contained step-by-step set of operations to be performed. Algorithms exist that perform calculation, data processing, and automatic, automated reasoning. So this is one of the definitions, because consider that there are mathematicians that are still trying to give a formal definition of algorithms corresponding to the intuitive notion and uh, uh, these mathematicians nowadays are not according to each other. So uh, still the question, what an algorithm is? When I heard for the first time the word algorithm, I was uh, in my first class, uh, oh sorry, or better, in, yes, in my first class at average school, and I was in an um, uh, experimental class um, where students, uh, could learn programming and coding. And I had um, a professor of, uh, of coding, of programming, that uh, asked us, asked to the students, uh, are you able to make pasta? And everyone uh, said, yes, okay. Oh, so, so you are able to write down your first algorithm. Because if you think, when, uh, when you do, when you make pasta, you, or better, me, in this case, this is my algorithm, uh, you do something like, like this, step by step, okay? And so, for example, one of the core part, one of the important part of this algorithm is when you check if the water is boiling or not, because you know, you, you know that water changes its boiling point uh, according to many things, uh, according to the fact that you are in mountain or uh, at your home. And, um, and so, for example, I did something like this. I, I wait for, a, for random seconds, and then I check if the water is boiling. If no, I, I wait again random seconds. And if yes, is, if uh, it's boiling, I put the salt on water, not too much, and, and very often nothing at all. But, uh, and then, and then uh, going on, I, I put the pasta in the water, and then the second loop, um, uh, is, is when I have to verify if the pasta is cooked. And so again, I wait a random second. I can 
I could read the the the, the, the cooking time of the pasta, but generally I uh, I do like this. Okay, so this is one. Uh, this was my first approach with algorithm, but uh, uh, when I, I I found that algorithm changing my life was when I um, when I went to university in 1993, 1994, more or less. And uh, just in that period, if you wanted to search something on the internet, uh, you find this page. You found this page. Alta Vista was a, a search engine, but if you remember, this was the home page, very, very chaotic home page. And, and also the algorithm was not, not so performing. But just a few years later, came uh, a disrupting thing like, like this. So Google came out with a very simple page, very user-friendly interface. And under the hood, you could find this hypersearch. And hypersearch is a, a, an algorithm that uh, was invented by an Italian guy, Massimo Marchiori. And uh, you can find uh, his interview online. And he, he, he tells how, when he was in Santa Clara uh, in, during a meeting, he just gave uh, away his, uh, his algorithm to Sergey Brin and Larry Page because she, he said that uh, he had no money to develop uh, all, all, all the ecosystem. And in the meantime, uh, Larry Page had the money, had, the, had, had some uh, good uh, venture capitalist. And so this is the story. But uh, what about uh, social things? What about social network? Uh, if you think that uh, Facebook is profiling your life day by day, this is one of the use that, that uh, uh, social, network, uh, social networks uh, do uh, about algorithm. But there are three peculiar social networks that use algorithms to let the user promote themselves. If you think that on YouTube you can find guys that earn uh, million of dollars per year just because they have understood uh, how YouTube works. And if you think that Instagram uh, does more or less the, thing, the same thing, and uh, Instagram really changed my life when uh, I found that in 2011 that, that there was uh, what we Instagrammers called the populist formula, uh, just an algorithm that decided which pictures had, had to be, had to stay on the popular page. What is the popular page? The popular page is the place um, in which pictures could be watched, could, could be observed by everyone that uh, joined Instagram, okay? So if your picture gained the popular page, you, you started to earn uh, a lot of followers in, in a very short time. And one day, I read this article, where ideas come from, inside Instagram's headquarters, and uh, my eyes uh, dropped down to these uh, pictures. Uh, picture. And I, and I saw this uh, likes word uh, inside uh, an algorithm, something like that. And so I started to think that perhaps uh, uh, we could do the reverse engineering of the algorithm of um, Instagram, of the popular, popular page, and we did it. Uh, me and some other friends uh, that I met on Instagram, obviously, um, we, we found that uh, if you gain 40 likes within 40 minutes, uh, your picture, boom, went to the popular page. And so all together, we met all together on Instagram, and we, you know, we changed our, our likes. Uh, and so from, from that uh, day, my audience uh, started to grow up, and uh, not only for, for, for the trick, okay, but now I have uh, eight, five thousand of followers on Instagram. And if you want to, to see how this changed my life, just Google my name on, uh, on Google and, uh, and you, you, you will see. Then another thing that uh, I, can, I can say changed my life uh, are these uh, two, uh, these two, how can I say, the first one is Enigma, is a cryptographer machine invented by a German engineer just at the end of the uh, war one, World War I. And, uh, and the other one is the Caesar cipher, perhaps the first uh, 
um, cryptographer algorithm that uh, we, 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 we invented in history, was invented by Julio Caesar to crypt the communication. And I used, I used this concept to build up my algorithm. For what? For obtain different passwords for every uh, services that I use. So it's very, very simple because, you know, people say, oh, yes, I have to, to keep many different passwords because if I have only one password and someone steals this password, is, is the end, okay? But keeping many passwords is very difficult, okay? You, you can have the app that, do, that does this for you. But it's very simple if you invent your algorithm to transform the name of the service in a, in a password. And so, for example, for me, Facebook becomes something just applying my algorithm. And I have only to remember my algorithm. It's, it's a very simple trick. And this really changed my life. And now, um, I'm running too much because I tried my, my presentation. <laughs> and now I said, OK. And uh, in, the, in the future, what happens in the future? OK, in the future, uh, yesterday we had the speech. Uh, uh, and we had we had, we had uh, like a, a chat here in our in, in our stage, and perhaps uh, uh, after me will come some uh, researchers and some speaker that uh, will be able to uh, explain you uh, what blockchain is. For example, blockchain is an algorithm that that uh, will be very important for for transactions, for money, for buy something, but on, but also very very important for contracts. Huh? Okay, think about the fact that in India, uh, eight, uh, when, you, when you go and you buy a home, for example, you have a contract, and you can say, oh, this is my home. But after five of, or six years, could come another one that, that, that says, no, I have the real contract of the home, because there is no um, a, a system that, can, uh, that permits to, to, to maintain, how can I say, a very strong, uh, trust system, okay? And with the blockchain, perhaps we, can, we could uh, solve this problem. And think about the fact that uh, in, the, in the real near future, uh, we will have uh, self-driving self objects like a Google car, like a robot taxi. Just two, two days ago, I read something about the fact that in uh, Japan, this company, Robot Taxi, said that, that within 2020, uh, there will be only automatic taxi in Japan, okay? And think about that this lab, it's an Italian company, it's an Italian spin-off from University of Parma. This company has been sold for 30 million of dollars, and this company is researching in, uh, in automatic, uh, automatic uh, self-driving aut uh, auto. And then the last one, my, uh, my la last theme of today um, is this. I am a father, I have three kids, and I'm, and I'm very involved in uh, education of my kids. And two of them are, are there, the two girls in the, in the first field. And uh, the, the boy over there is uh, the son of someone uh, <laughs> that's present here, so I have the permission to publish this, this picture, <laughs> okay? And um, what we do? Uh, me and other mentors uh, organize Coder Dojo. How many mentors are there today of Coder Dojo? I guess somebody. Okay, very interesting. And what Coder Dojo are? Coder Dojo are um, events in which uh, we let uh, kids play with technology, but um, uh, often we let them play with this uh, environment, uh, with this program, we can, we can say. This is Scratch. It's a program developed at the Media Lab at the MIT of Boston, okay? And it's very simple for kids because they can play, clipping together, uh, connecting together, all these uh, virtual blocks. And, and it works like Lego. You clip together all these blocks and you build up a logic. You build up an algorithm. So we are teaching, not, not just teaching, let them, uh, uh, let them learn. This, uh, this is the, the, the sentence that I prefer. Let them learn how algorithm works. But why we, we, we need to, to let, let our kids 
uh, playing in this, uh, in this situation. Because, um, uh, as we said yesterday, things are changing faster than we die, as uh, uh, David Orban said. And uh, I, I'm really convinced by the fact that we need to take control of our brain evolution, letting our kids to be able to adapt to more and more disrupting changes. So this is why I'm so involved in the Coder Dojo. Thank you very much.